so we'll just brush off if it goes. Okay, let's hope it lasts. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so a question on faith uh, and faith and also practicality around money and working. So, I, you know, I've had some, uh, I'll just share about myself a little bit on this aspect of faith. And I think, <clears throat> and also decision, decision making. Well, decision making, what is, what is the right thing to do? Like, for example, with um, financial decisions and going to work when you don't want to work or you feel you're incapable of work. Well, for me, it, it's the thing of, it, it just, for every individual, it depends on the context of the situation. So for what happens with one individual, it can be so. What, and what do I mean by that? I mean, the universe is always presenting a lesson. And sometimes the lesson, depending on where one is, with one individual beliefs or karma or where one is in life, sometimes the lesson is you, you need to work. You know, that's the next right thing that the universe wants you to do. And sometimes the thing is like, don't work and have faith. Now, usually for... Um, and sometimes the answer could be either of those things. It could be like, if you don't want to go to absolute faith, but you want to remain practical in the world, it might be to work. Or if you're okay and you're not going to harm anyone, uh, and you have the capacity to go into absolute faith without creating harm to anyone, it could be to take a leap and go into absolute faith uh, and to see if the universe will provide yeah, as you walk through the fear of, of completely letting go. So as, as to which answer is, is the right, it depends on the, on the circumstance. Sometimes I would say generally if one is in a, a field of lethargy and darkness and uh, sometimes there's not the capacity to go to absolute faith, it's just, too, it's just, not, it's just not the right time. And therefore often it can be to get a job and 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 then uh, and get a, get a slightly higher faith, and then um, if it seems the right thing to do in this lifetime, go for absolute faith. Like you know, will everything be provided for me if I let go absolutely of everything I feel I need to rely on as a crutch in this world? Um, I have an and as to which one is the right thing for an individual, it just depends on where they are in this spiritual journey. Sometimes. Sometimes the lesson is let go of absolutely everything and trust for certain, uh, that's usually an advanced lesson and sometimes for others it's like uh, the defect is sloth or procrastination and it's like you know, the universe is going, you're not going to get out unless you take a job. So it's like uh, that's the only option, uh, that's, the, that's the right option that the universe wants you to take. Uh, so it just, it just varies, I mean I actually believe in muscle testing or if you've got someone who has access to um, a strong connection as to which to be able to discern which is which is the lesson for the next right step. Anyway, so um, in terms of we know on a, on, a, on a simplistic level, work. I mean, work is it has the connotation of doing something you don't like doing for money. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's there's different ways of seeing it. Like a miracle is just different. So what what if what if there was such a thing where you were doing something fun and you get paid for it? Uh, mm. Then that wouldn't be in your ego something that would call work. It's like, you know, I don't know, it could be something like you're enjoying yourself making some clothes or something and it's fun. You know, you do, that's the way you relax. And somehow people pay you money for that. And that, that wouldn't seem to be work. Or if it's taking photographs uh, for fun and people are buying that. Uh, so um, you don't have to call it work. And also, the, I, mean, the, I mean, if you go back to olden days, uh, there's, other, there's other ways to get everything you need apart from using money. You know, things like bartering. Uh, we had a guy, I think it's okay, because we're not part of the 12 step. We had a guy that came here. Uh, he was, um, should I say this? I don't know. Anyway, he, let's say he had no work and he had no home. And he would just trust the universe and he would get painting jobs and stuff like that. And he was always provided for. And he was a good painter. It's like people just referred him. It's like, oh, after you've painted his house, this person needs their house painted, and you can just stay in that spare room. And it was like the universe was providing for him. Uh, and he had, he, had a, he had a very good spiritual connection, a lot of faith. He was quite an incredible character. 
So it just shows, like, you know, um, if you have absolute trust, the, you know, the universe can take care of you, even though I'm not sure I would choose that path. Um, so, um, so faith. Faith, uh, I think the question was uh, faith, absolute faith, being practical, having a job. Oh, a, a lack of faith in spiritual groups. And now I think, I think, I mean, okay, here's the thing that, um, I actually see that this is like, a, this is just my view, this is a school for transcendence. Or it's a school where everything's going to be tested. Uh, your faith is going to be tested in everything you think you need to rely on at some point. Unless you just happen to die first before you've gone through all your lessons. So, like if you think like, um, I can't live without this romantic relationship. You know, I can't survive without it. It will probably get tested at a certain point. Or if you think um, if money is your god, or a certain career is your job, you might get tested on that because there's an over reliance on that to be the thing that saves you. Uh, so I think all of these things that one projects uh, magical or special qualities onto often usually come up to be tested. So, I mean, you, even your physical life, you know, your, your body starting to die and stuff like that gets, uh, is also a, a test as well. And uh, for me, there's only one place in my experience where there can be no fear, no matter what's happening in the world. And, and that's what I'd call the, um, it can be called the observer, the enli uh, enlightenment, it can be called the non-dual space. But even there in that place, even the death of the physical body, no money, no friends, no people, it still takes care of all of those things. So reliance on needing people to save you, because it's beyond this world, uh, but can be accessed in this world. And, uh, and um, it's a place of absolute safety and freedom. So otherwise, I think, you know, like people rely on their physical body to be themselves, or they rely on money or they rely on their friendships. Um, I think all of that can have, a, have, um, can, have um, can serve their purpose. Um, I mean, in the big book it does say at the end it's about reliance on God, not people. Reliance on God, not people at the end of the day. Wife or no wife, job or no job, you cannot get well unless your reliance is on God. It's a quote out of the big book. So eventually the dependency on even people in the program needs to be released to get that absolute uh, connection, even though people in the beginning are needed to go through the steps and develop that faith in the 12-step programs. So, um, in terms of, but even if, like, let's say the world is going down in vibration and 12-step groups are going down in vibration, but it's still, it's just a matter of faith and accessing, accessing greater faith. So there is a place of faith where even if the whole world went into a really bad vibration, you'd still be okay, even if the whole world is going into doom and gloom. Which was a certain thing, I mean, like in the olden days, I mean, the world was pretty barbaric, and there were people with uh, phenomenal spiritual connections. And, you know, people were crucifying people around them if you said the wrong thing. And that was a pretty savage world, and yet there were people that could exist with extreme faith much more than you could say, I mean, you could say that the world's going downhill. But it's not that barbaric yet, but it's also sort of, like if you say the wrong thing, this group will put you on a cross and nail you there. <laughs> Don't think so, at least not for today, anyway, that's not the, that's not the game plan. Um, so, so um, it's not helpful if you haven't got absolute faith in a group where the vibration's going down, but still the same principles apply for letting that go. And um, so, uh, generally on a practical level, I find with 12-step fellowships, um, like you'll have groups which are specialist atheist groups, you know, and they just say, like, everyone here, we just don't want to use the word God, and we're all atheists, and we, we all like it in this group. And you'll get these kind of, like, big book thumping groups, where it's like God, God this, God that, God everything, God bashing, you know, whatever it is, sort of like Bible bashing. You know, I love those groups. I would, I mean, an atheist group probably wouldn't, wouldn't suit me. But I really think even if, if the vibration of the 12 steps and the country went downhill, there'd probably be a few groups 
in, in London where you know the, the, the more connected people would get together I'll just I'll just find those groups out or I just start one up you know where the um, <clears throat> I don't know I'd probably call it 12 step 12 step food recovery OA God group something mm -hmm. like that so repel the atheists mm -hmm. and get the spiritual Goddy squad in, so that's probably where I'd end up going, or I'd start that group up myself.